like I don't I won't hate someone automatically for calling me a foodie because I I do not prefer it. I prefer like food enthusiast or food, you know, but I am a food journalist. Hello and welcome to Here in LA, Los Feliz edition. Today we chat with Esther Sang, a journalist specialing in food, drinks, and sometimes super fast private jets. We talk about where she likes to eat in and around Los Feliz, what it was like growing up as one of the few Asian kids in her school in Wisconsin, and what she did after she was accepted and moved out to UCLA. She even reveals a great sushi spot in a least likely corner of Hollywood. So pull on your cheese head hat and turn it up. Esther Sang? Yes. How did your mom say it again? Sung. Sung. Esther Sung? Yeah, just stick to Sang. Oh. I think. <laughs> Looking at your Instagram, yeah. which, by the way, congratulations. Beautiful Instagram. Oh, thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, 20,000 followers? Yeah, I, I hope to bump it up to 21 soon. We'll see. I'm at like <laughs> that 29. 20,009. Isn't it terrible when you're near a milestone? Yeah. And I don't, I mean, I, like if I cared more, I would like work at it. What would you do? I don't like post more. (laughs) I do a lot of stories and then they disappear in 24 hours. So it's like more noncommittal and okay. You're a freelance journalist. Yeah. And there's a lot of pluses and minuses to that (laughs) that we'll get into. Yeah. One of the pluses I would imagine is when when I was at the LA Times, I yeah. learned that at that particular newspaper, yeah. <laughs> they don't allow you to go on junkets unless yes. the paper's paying. Yes. Before that, I just assumed it was totally kosher. If, you know, some Swiss vodka wants to fly you out to Switzerland, <laughs> just drink their dumb vodka. Totally cool, right? Right, right. But at that paper, they were like, no, you're going to be unfairly influenced. You're going to feel like you owe them something. And the only way that we can even the scale is, and and if, if that really is the only place where you can drink this and it's important, we'll just pay. We'll yeah. pay for the everything. Yeah. Whereas a lot of times freelancers yeah. or journalists from just different organizations are like, fine, you want to put my girl up? She's still going to say it's crappy if it's crappy. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do, you, how do you stand on that? Are you influenced when people put you up in a nice hotel? I would be lying if I say I weren't influenced. Well, God bless you for telling the truth. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm totally the same way. And, yeah. and I'll tell you, um, the early days of Coachella, yes. when I was running LAist, okay. they would give me a couple tickets. Totally. I and, and a lot of times they were VIP, so you, of course. you're living right. You yeah. Know? And um, one year... Something happened and I didn't get a ticket. Right. And so I had to pay. Yeah. I had just the regular ticket. Yeah. I got stuck in traffic. Yeah. My review was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. In, because I was free to be brutal. It was um, also a normal person's experience. Exactly. And so when my contact at Golden Voice, who I still love, yes. um, said, holy mackerel. <laughs> I was like, you know what? This is the first time I actually yeah. didn't get to hobnob with yeah. Miley Cyrus backstage. This was the first time I actually had to listen to these bands. Exactly. In the sun. No shade. <laughs> no shade. Right. And and this was when they had, I think this was the first year, this is how old I am, the first year that they turned it into a three-day thing. Right. So you had to drive on a Friday out there. Right. So the traffic was terrible. Right. And... um. And I ended up that night just selling my other two tickets in the parking lot. Right, right. I was like, I ain't coming back here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I kind of, in a, in a weird way, I kind of agree with the LA Times. Yeah, that of if, course. That if we do want to make a review on behalf of the audience, yep. we should try everything we can to be like the audience. I do not disagree with you. <laughs> but you'll also take that. <laughs> <laughs> I do because I, I don't have an LA times budget, you know, and, um, and I mean, this is just purely going on my word now. Right. Because, but I won't, I never really falsely say at a good time when I didn't, I will actually tell, um, 
the PR person who invited me, you know, what a bad experience it was or maybe what a semi bad experience, mediocre experience it was, but, um, and I won't post about it, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. And the PR person will be totally cool with that. Yeah. They'd rather me not say negative things. Right. <laughs> so, so the adage, uh, uh, any press is good press is not true in the food world. Probably not. But then I've also said bad things, like kind of like maybe just honest things, but I, it's not like I would go on about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like I, I, if I feel like it's a responsibility to tell this aspect that's negative, then I will do that. Right. But um, there's never any guarantee. And I don't think any, I, I would hope and, if they're mistaken, that's not my problem. But any PR people would be like, you can only post good, you know, positive things because that's that's actually just like um, a blatant undermining of any sort of journalism. Whatsoever. Absolutely. Yeah. But I would imagine that the um, the food circles are small. Yes. And so if you burn your bridge with one PR person, yeah, that person might end up on several accounts that you want. Yeah. And yeah. will never forget you. Yeah. I've been, um, I mean, I've, I've been on, um, I'm sure a couple, at least PR reps, uh, blacklist, you know, I was like, Oh, I haven't heard from that one for a while. Oh, I haven't heard from that person for a while. And it was cause you weren't glowing in your review, but probably because maybe like a story fell through and I wasn't like forthcoming about why or how or apologetic even, you know, <laughs> Which, again, isn't really your job. Yeah. 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 We, we are. Uh, yeah. We. And I, can't, I, haven't, I haven't been a journalist in a long time, but I don't feel like journalists are no. an arm of PR. No, they're not. Absolutely not. But also, what is their job, right? Yes. And then what is my job? That's not, it's not to be their arm. And what, like, are PR going to, is PR going to cut us off because maybe their feelings for one client were hurt? for one client that's right and so let's say you are um let's say you're in los feliz because this, yeah. this is what this is where we're talking about right now yeah and um so mexico city closed down and oh, there's yeah. and there's a new one that's coming up okay so let's say the pr person reaches out to you and you're like mm, i kind of wish mexico city was back <laughs> Right? I love this specific example. And well, it's easy because the yeah, new one isn't right open. Yeah. So this can this can be easy. Oh, okay. But um, if I was a PR person, I wouldn't blacklist you for that. Right. Because yeah. Because I've got five other ones I've got to do. Yeah. Yeah. In the future, yeah. and I want you. Yeah. Because I want the honest person. Yeah. Because. Now, if I go back to my client and say, look how she tore apart this one and look how much she loved you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's better than yeah. some of these journalists who only <laughs> say nice things. Right, right. Would you agree? I would agree. <laughs> I think you've got my approach down. <laughs> You were flown in a private jet. <laughs> I was. To Napa Valley. <laughs> For that, a day. Th that's a dream. I, I know it was. That was pretty, pretty cool. Had you built a relationship with the agency or whoever? You know, it was a totally, it was just a super lucky invite. Like, um, I probably half knew one other uh, journalist or and no influencers on that trip and there we were at half influencers half half journalists so um it was a great time we did two wineries and then flew back on this brand new airline called wheels up i guess and the jet was super fast we were there in like a half hour no yeah la to nap in a half hour yeah santa rosa and this jet is a so supposedly it can get you to new york in like I think three hours. Did you feel queasy? Was it? it I mean, I felt the ascension pretty, pretty steady and fast. It was nice, very smooth for how small it was. So uh, I'm, I'm getting into this because I want people to know what your glamorous life is <laughs> oh, like. My glamorous life. So do they? 
Is there a car that picks you up at your, your house? Yeah, that I did have a, a black car. And it takes you to Burbank? It took me to Burbank. Which is the right place. It is the perfect place. For a yeah, Los yeah, Feliz yeah. It was a person. hangar. Yeah, a dedicated Straight hangar. Straight to the hangar. Yeah. Do you have to go through a metal detector? Um, no. See, that's pretty cool. That is definitely the coolest part is no TSA. That's awesome. Plus, obviously, the super small airport, the one-room airport. <laughs> I'm just thinking how easy it is to smuggle drugs then. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, completely. These rich guys? Totally. They're, they're transporting wherever they want. Yeah. I, I mean, I was thinking about the possibilities with my limited experience <laughs> of, of having, you know, millions or billions, I guess. So black car to this incredible jet. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's only 30 minutes. So do, you, do they even serve you a drink on this thing? Yeah. Um, no flight attendant, but basically a chest full of uh, minis, liquor minis and mixers, um, spare headphones, full charging station, um, newspapers. Um, you have a couple, you have one drink. I mean, 30 minutes. I know. Or you're downing or... Yeah, or You're you just, on you have thing. all the money in the world who matter, what does it matter, right? But I'm talking about you personally. Oh, me. No, because I knew I was already going to have wine when I got right. there. I didn't really have a drink. Good. So, okay, so you fly out there. Yeah. Is this a private, uh, is it a small airport that you fly into? In, in yes. Santa Rosa, you say, right? Yeah. And another car takes you, I'm sure, to the, or is it a van? Is it like one of those party vans? It was a shuttle since there were a few media, you know, there was, there were two jets of media. Two so. jets? Yeah. Because really this is the jet that is, is the sponsor of this event? Yeah. And they IPO'd the next day. That was like fully planned. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So, to me, this is the beauty of being a, a freelance journalist. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You get an email. Lie. You're right. You don't have to fight with your boss <sighs> yeah. on who's going to go. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. You sample some wine. Yeah. Is there any pressure on you to even review any of this? No. What a deal. <laughs> yeah. It, okay, out of the year, yeah. how many events like this are thrown your way? And by this, I mean awesome. Oh, like awesome? Yeah. Like, that's awesome, right? Yeah, that's super awesome. Okay. Like, that's probably, like, the best for the year as far well, as, Once like, a year, something yeah, like that's Like, something happen. I could never dream of paying for on my own, right? Yeah. Um, I would say, like, that's, like, money. There's also things that are just obviously, like, events that are curated and carved out just for us that you know that they wouldn't do for normal people i th i would say about like five events a year like that just the, is your mom still alive yes do you call your mom and say you'll never believe this because <laughs> i do when cool stuff happens with me yeah yeah do you though with your mom um not really because she worries <laughs> oh, the, the, why are you on this little plane? Yeah, or she'll, um, my mom is very rarely impressed. <laughs> Which is why I'd be flooding her with this stuff. Exactly. Ma, check it out. I've, I've learned to not expect any sort of, like, reaction. <laughs> no. Wow. I know, I know. Is this a Taiwanese thing? It's very Taiwanese. It's, it's super Taiwanese. In, in. I, I may sound racist when I say this. No, no go Is this for an it. Asian mom thing, too? You know, um, I I wouldn't say it's an Asian mom. I would say it's a Taiwanese mom thing. It's Taiwanese very, moms are a little harder than your average? Oh, yeah, yeah, super. Okay, so when has she been impressed? Um, oh, wow. You know, Esther when, is looking deep <laughs> into my trees right now. She, it's, it's very much like um, what is good on paper. So, like, you know, am I going to UCLA? She'll say that whenever she's introducing me. Or, you know, a very, a very like, just rigid by the book, um, textbook type impressive things. 
that are earned in school. <laughs> are very, Only in school. <laughs> I mean, very. Yes. You've you've written for the LA Times, Bon yeah. Appetit. She's mentioned I were I've written for the LA Times. That she, impressed her. She doesn't not she doesn't know what Bon Appetit is, you know. So that's LA-ist, reference. Did LAist impress her? LAist, she did not know. She only knew about the LA Times, and then, um, yeah, and then, but then, but then, since they're conservative, my parents. Oh. You know, there's there's like liberal media. <laughs> <laughs> Does she think the LA Times is liberal? Uh... Um, she doesn't present it that way when she's introducing me. <laughs> I've written for Good. LA Times, so yeah. yeah. So she would be happier if you wrote for Fox News? No. 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 I don't think so. I think she's at least somewhat seen through that, thankfully, because of the last couple election cycles. Oh, really? Well, vaguely. Trump has turned her less conservative? Um, it's like she doesn't care anymore <laughs> to, to shield herself, but she is super conservative. Really? Yeah. Uh, did that make it hard for you as a teenager to date oh, boys yeah. and stuff? Oh yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't meet many, any boys. Not even meet. <laughs> um, did you go to like, church? on record. Did you go to church? Yeah. Oh yeah. I had are, to go to church. Right. The boys are at church. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. But I don't know. It's like... It's, I'm trying to remember who I was interested in. I mean, it's hard enough as a teenage boy to make a move on a girl. Dude. But at church? Yeah. Where you got God looking at you? Yeah. The whole, <laughs> the whole family? Yeah. Is this Catholic And church? everyone else you know. Um, no. A uh, Protestant, like... Uh, evangelical. I I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound yeah. good. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Protestant, just like very like like white evangelical, like like Trump's base, basically. That's Trump's biggest base. Right, <laughs> right. Um, so when you went to UCLA, did you go to UCLA straight out of high school? Yeah, that is something to be proud of. It is. That's a very hard school to get into. It is. Also, again. America, whoever's listening to this, I'm not a racist. Yeah. But, I, but I am, I'm not blind enough not to see race yes. and ethnicity. Yes. Uh, UCLA yeah. has a lot of Asians. It's 40%. Right. Yeah. And they're trying to trim back. All right, yeah. Are they? Yes. Yeah, they are. And, I mean, hmm. one of the terrible nicknames is... University of Caucasians Lost Among Asians. Right. So I would say any Asian who has made it in there as a freshman as a 17 yeah. year old 18 year old yeah has kicked ass in high school yeah yeah i mean i think academically i was 13th look at you but um you know i had the extracurriculars i had i had the music that's what i had I read somewhere where you were kidding that you because you're asian you played violin yeah. and piano totally you weren't kidding oh i milked that but were you really good at it both? I was really good at it. I was really good. Um, basically, I had a violin scholarship at Wisconsin. Really? That I turned down because I needed to get the hell out of there. I don't blame you. So all three of my older brothers are, ba- are badgers. I am the only one who's not a badger. Why did you need to leave? Well, I was just, I just needed to be a place where it's less racist. You grew up in a very conservative family Mm -hmm. church Mm -hmm. boys couldn't hit on you well no i don't know if they couldn't but you know you know what it's hard to do with that i mean i (laughs) I pass notes all the time oh nice. i think that's why i'm a writer now nice Ooh, you're a note writer if i well back then yeah yeah if i could write something that makes them laugh and if they write something back yeah we got something did you make little check boxes for them to check off i made full stories oh amazing but they could also check out check off yeah Yeah, they they could check off it 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 was it was blogging basically on paper you're right you know it's perfect and so um one thing that i realized when i moved here i'm much older than you i moved here in 84. okay one thing i i realized and i didn't real i didn't uh, I guess I didn't know that our school was as conservative as it was. Okay. Until I came to LA. Amazing. And 
the girls, instead of wearing like farmer's dresses up to the neck. Farmers. They, it looked like Little House on the Prairie out there. Amazing. Uh, there's mini skirts going on over here. Mm -hmm. Look at her smiling. <laughs> Did your fashion change when you were a free woman at UCLA? Teenage girl? You know, um... A great violinist? We, uh... <laughs> I played on the UCLA field for like a year just to like, you know, be like... I didn't co completely quit violin, but you know. I wasn't doing any solo work. But, um... No, you know, what ended up being the club attire were the black boot cut party pants. What year is this? 97, 98, okay. 99. Black pants. Yeah. But then, you know, the colorful top <laughs> with like <laughs> the platform dress shoes or whatnot, you know, strappy like dress shoes or something. Did you uh, find yourself among other Asians? Did you want I to? Did. did you seek I, it out? I sought it out. I guess that was the purpose for my coming here, or one of them. Um, and I mean, <laughs> I went to the Asian school and I became president of like one of the Asian clubs. So like, I really just dove in. <laughs> Had you been president of any clubs before in high school? Um, probably just an officer, not president. You know? Did that disappoint your mom? No. Okay, good. No. Was she excited that you were the president of an Asian club? No, because it was a Chinese club, and I'm Taiwanese. Did they not have a Taiwanese club there? They had a Taiwanese club, but they weren't cool. Really? Yeah. But it, Good for you. But this is just because, like, the only reason we were supposedly cool and had, like, the, lar the largest membership was because we threw parties. That we weren't really, I mean, we were, like... A collegiate club, but we threw parties. <laughs> were they good parties? They were good parties. They were great parties. Did you sneak a little booze in there? Oh yeah, you had a you had a like uh, twenty one it. Oh, you we could, had bouncers you, and <laughs> you had to show your your fake ID to get in. Yeah, basically. Because you were twenty one throwing these parties. No, did you? Oh no, I was I was helping, but I wasn't throwing them until I was. You know, I was only president my my uh, last year. So. Oh, is that how it went? Okay, yeah. good. Let's talk about food and drink in Los Feliz. Okay. Um, what's your favorite place? Let's pick favorites. Oh, man. This is the hardest question. This is a hard question? This is the hardest yet most common. Oh, really? Because... I'm being a basic bitch? No, you're not basic. Well, kind of like the answers in this long explanation of being like, it really depends on my mood, you know? Okay. I, I, have, I have no favorites because they just change. My, my mood changes. Well, since, since your Instagram has a lot of uh, seafood and mm -hmm. Asian in it, <laughs> let's start with Asian. Seafood and Asian, I love that you picked that out. It's not true? It's true. Okay. But to hear you say it, it's great. <laughs> I feel like there's only, in Los Feliz, there's only one well-known Chinese restaurant and only one really good sushi place. Interesting. Okay, where, what are those? So next door to the Rustic is a Chinese restaurant. Oh, yes. Chi Dynasty. I've never been there. What? Yeah. Okay, so tell me, is there good Chinese in Los Feliz? You know, I really loved Golden Hen on Virgil. Golden Hen. That's not, that's not Los Feliz, but... Right. You know, that's like squirrel territory. Yes. So I, I miss that place. She closed after like 30 some years, just like a few months ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. There was that great video right. where she um, went across the street to Squirrel. Or yes. maybe Squirrel came to her. Squirrel came to her, I think. Yeah. And they had a, a really nice chat. Yeah. Yeah. So Golden Head had to go. Yeah. COVID shut her down, do you think? No. Um, she was tired. She had just been done it for a long time. And her you know kids didn't want to take it over, which is very common. So uh, she hadn't thought about staying open, but then... I think they already cut off all their power, you know. I mean, for they said it for the first of the month, so right. they couldn't undo it. So in Los Feliz, no good Chinese food. I think it's been determined. Yeah, I think you're right. 
Which is understandable. Yeah. Because we know where the good Chinese restaurants are. <laughs> you know what is really good Chinese food in Hollywood is IXLB. Where is this? Exactly. I think, um, is it Bronson? You know, it's like, I think it's Bronson across, or, uh, and Hollywood. Okay. And, um, it's dim sum, but they also have like the other things. <laughs> the other Chinese things also some stir, stir fries. IXLB? Yeah, it's kind of like iPhone, but XLB, which is the acronym for the Chinese uh, way to say pork soup dumplings. You know, I haven't had dim sum in a long time. Oh, yeah. So I should go there and just load up. Yeah, super close. Uh, reasonably priced? Reasonably priced. There's no sit down. And it, you just order and pick it up and go. Oh, really? Yeah, it's takeout only. Oh. Yeah. Wait a second. Is it, That's not the, the sunset over by... Oh, sorry. It's sunset. Okay. It's sunset. Over by the, the Netflix uh, yes, headquarters. Yes, yes, exactly. I've passed that. Yeah. It Super looks cool good. from the outside. looks very modern. Mm hmm and they make everything in house. A lot of times, dim sum places will like buy the pre bought or pre made, steam it, but they make everything. I didn't know that restaurants mm. did that. Mm hmm. Isn't, Very, that, like, isn't yeah. that against? Isn't it like, should you be doing when that? You have your standard, you know, you've got your mass, whatever, like shipping, dim sum. I have eaten services. there once, I think. Mm hmm. Um, right when COVID was really happening. Right. They have just kind of like a, a a few like stand up tables, right? Yeah, and they they put those to the side. Yeah, and then um, they boarded up their windows, right? Because they were very nervous, of course, as they should be. And they're all glass, so yeah, right. All the walls were glass. I X L B S was sex. That's, that's called. yeah, yeah. And you liked it. I like it a lot. Then that's good enough recommendation for me. Yeah. Um, okay, so the sushi place. Okay. On, on Hillhurst. Which place? Sushi I? I haven't been there. Oh, you haven't? <laughs> no. So you haven't had good sushi in... Los, no, because I, I feel like Los Feliz is very much like a localized... Like, I don't, I don't get that micro-localized. <laughs> you know? Like, my, I think a, my, one of my favorite sushi spots under the radar is also in Hollywood. Really? Yeah. But this time at Santa Monica and La Brea, behind that Trejo's Donuts. Uh, really? Yeah, in that little yeah. like strip mall. It's called Suragashi. Super under the radar. You just step up to the the sushi bar and their um, their fish. You know, it's like traditional style nigiri, but they'll they'll also have some small plates. You know, like salad starters, stuff like that. Who cares about those things? Well, yeah. And their their fish selection is a little, like, it's more rare and a little more special than your standard salmon awesome. and whatnot. So it's great. How interesting that it's there. I know. Have you seen the movie Tangerine? I have not. Of the, um, uh, I don't know if they're trans. They're, they might be trans or at least cross-dressing prostitutes. Uh -huh. Because when it was donut oh, time. It's that corner. That's what I'm saying. Yes. It's kind of a grungy it is. corner. It is. To have high quality sushi. It's great. <laughs> I mean, like the sushi chef, you know, he's Japanese. He, um, my, <laughs> my boyfriend, I think, used to work with him at a different restaurant. So, <laughs> is your boyfriend a, a chef? No, he is a, I mean, he's been a server, you know, stuff like that. But, um, now he's a photographer, videographer. Um, and still tens bar at the, at the Legion, at the, uh, Hollywood Legion, the American Legion on, um, uh, Highland, like right by the Hollywood bowl. Yes. With the cannon. Can regular people go in there? They need to go in with a member. So anytime you want to go, let me know. Do I want to go? Yes. I do. I mean, the vets, <laughs> you'll get a mixed bag, you know? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be Holly a very interesting mixed bag. Isn't Hollywood the greatest? Yeah, it is. Okay, so where do you love to eat in Los Feliz? Man, 
I love found oyster. Yeah. Do you consider that Los Feliz? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> I'm still but, going around. It's fine. It's fine. Los Feliz. Let, no, 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 let, let's, let's talk about found oyster. Okay. Because this is, you're talking now Little Armenia, technically. Yes, I am. Which is fine. I am. Because, um, I mean, we don't need borders. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not China. I'm right? not trying to like, put people in boxes. <laughs> Found Oyster is interesting to me because across the street before the pandemic yes. was Five Leaves. I remember. And Five Leaves was so fancy. It was. From the outside. Really nice inside. Kind of loud inside. Pretty loud. Found Oyster, I think that used to be like a Mexican church. Oh, amazing. Like um, a Nicosia, yeah. Like an only in LA kind of Mexican yeah. church because it really should have been like um a shoe repair shop right something just narrow and right. small and um and all of a sudden there's like this i want to say like kind of a hipster oyster place and i was like eh, who cares about this and then the pandemic happened and they allowed the city allowed a lot of the restaurants to have outdoor seating mm -hmm. so they took away two two of the curbside parking spots yes and built this place where everybody could the structure their, and it turned into a party place. It's super party. And it, I all of a sudden just love that scene. Yeah. I'm not crazy about oysters, but I, I like it when people are happy. Yeah. Those people seemed really, really happy. They're really happy. Take they got me. wine. Oh, is, is that why they're laughing <laughs> They so got much? wine, too. They got a nice wine list, so yeah. Are their oysters super fresh? They are super fresh. And one of the... Oh, so the GM, Joe... Uh, or the GM, Joe, his parents' oyster farm supplies a lot, like, most of the oysters. Here in L.A.? Mm-hmm. And they're in, I think, Massachusetts. Originally? His parents' oyster farm. So they, they have to fly them over? I guess they ship them somehow. Yeah, there's, like, or they, they probably have, like, an agreement with one of the fish markets and they pick them up, you know? Wow. Yeah. I saw on your Instagram that you had gone there. Yeah. And um, I get hungry every time I look through Foodie's Instagrams. <laughs> yeah. They, you had a picture of chicken fried oysters oh, from there. Oh, yeah. How do you chicken fry an oyster? You know, I'm, I'm not the cook. Does it, <laughs> taste, does it taste a little like chicken? Not like chicken, but like it's just I think the breading you know, and I, I forget which part exactly is the chicken, you know, whether it's like a, the oil or whatnot. I don't know. Right. Um, I don't know how to chicken fry anything, but they <laughs> sounded good and they tasted very good. <laughs> how do you feel about Little Doms? I like Little Doms. It's a very established neighborhood place. It's solid, uh, you know, like... Americanized Italian, and it's also tailored to the neighborhood. Um, good wine list. Really good wine list. And I think it's great for a date. It's great for a date. Great atmosphere. I feel like almost all Italian is good for dates. Yeah. Even that one over by the drawing Full room. Uh, the Italian place by the drawing room. Um, yes. La Pergoletta. And they have two locations. The other one's on what? Sunset? Sunset. Yeah. In Silver Lake. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'll order from there. I'll get like, you know, the noodle and meat and sauce combo, whatever I'm feeling at the time. There's a lot. They have a lot of choices. But Little Dom's though, I mean, okay, so Little Dom's is where I take the first date. Okay. Right? Yeah. I've been on, on some first dates there. Because it, it, cause it looks a little bit more fancy than your average yeah. restaurant. Absolutely. Um, the prices are a little bit more. They are. But not crazy. They're not crazy. And it's a cozy place. Yeah. And it's constantly busy. Oh, yeah. So it's like a total neighborhood favorite. Right. Um, on Los Feliz Boulevard. Yeah. Right around the corner. Yeah. Is, um, it used to be the Derby. Oh. Mess Hall? Yes. Yes. I'm not crazy about Mess Hall. You know. Am I missing something? I think it's got... It's there for the range, <laughs> like the really big menu. Oh. Yeah. So whatever, you know, if you're thinking, I think you can get like barbecue, but you know, you can also get oysters, but you can also get, you know what I mean? 
And, um, you know, I've gone there to watch a Packer game. <laughs> you know, they got the one screen there. So, and, and it's a big place. And for some reason, you know, the tables are kind of usually at least half packed. I yeah. feel you're going to so, get, you're going to get seating. Right. So I recognize what it's for, but I can see why you say that. <laughs> Where else do you recommend in Los Feliz for food? Um, okay. Well, for food. See, you're hesitating. You know what? Cocktails, big bar. I, I'm not talking about cocktails yet. Oh, no. <laughs> I think you've, you've played your hand. Breakfast alcove. Yes. Yes. Patio, yeah. I often go to the home across the street. Okay. Even though the food's not as good. Okay. Okay. Do you feel the same way? I haven't been to home. You've never been there? No, because the line scares me away. Oh. Well, you wake up early. I do. I'm, I usually, I'm not there when the lines are there. <laughs> I'm sleeping in. I see. But but I think you're right. When yeah. I do have like yeah. normal people in my life. Right. And they're like, let's have brunch. I usually end up at Alcove. Exactly. Because you're right. The line is longer at home. It's true. It's true. And then home, I guess, partnered with the, the coffee shop next door. What's it called? The Guest House. Oh, that's right. I think what we've learned here is Los Feliz. <laughs> has a lot of room to grow. It does well. Food go, wise, yeah. You know, I I go all over for. Well, I know food. you do, but I'm just saying for this neighborhood. Yes, for this neighborhood, and especially for as vibrant as the neighborhood is, mm -hmm. and as well bred as a lot of people are, mm -hmm. a good restaurant would support itself. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what I really love actually in Los Feliz. What's that? Like right on Hillhurst. Okay. And it's on the uh, it's on the east side. Okay. And um, oh, all time. Yeah, that's super good. I've never been in. They're really good. What They're, what what should I order there? You know, um, it changes. It's it's on a chalkboard or a whiteboard. It it looks too fancy for me. Yeah, but it's good. Also, I really like um, Loop at Kitchen. It's what kitchen? Lupet. Lupet kitchen. Lup Lupet. L O U P I E T C. It's a French ish restaurant also on Hillhurst. Uh, what about that French bistro on. Oh, Vermont? yeah. That's like a. That's a scene. It is a scene. I will get. I'll go for happy hour, get the Cure Royale and some escargot, you know, drowning in butter and garlic and chives or whatnot. I really admire your your ability to eat almost everything. Oh yeah. Cause you're mentioning stuff I would never try. I eat everything. Since childhood, were you like this? Uh, I've had no food allergies. I'm Asian and my entire family, none of us are lactose intolerant, which. And what about the booze? Cause sometimes. The booze, we are allergic. My both my parents first sip of red wine, they'll turn beet red. So I've um, kind of, I don't recommend this, but I've hammered my tolerance into, you know, submission. Did Just, you did UCLA do this for you? Not really, actually. I think I drank a lot later, and because I didn't really like the taste for al of alcohol for a long time, but I also feel like. That's the main reason of why I'm still drinking, right? So, yes. You paced yourself. I paced myself. Uh, my reaction is too, you know, too severe to let me go too far. Right. So. Um, have you had the best fish tacos of Ensenada? Also <laughs> on Hitler's. Oh, my gosh. I have not. I love it. Really? And he's on my list to talk to about Los Feliz. Okay. Because he's a white dude. Okay. Who, just like me probably, went to Ensenada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fell in love with fish tacos. Okay. And said, how hard could this be? I'm hoping that's the story he's going to tell me. <laughs> I'm hoping. Because just a giant vat of grease. Yeah. And you get a couple people who know how to, I mean, it's how hard could it be, right? <laughs> hey, frying is an art.
Okay, let's talk about drinks then. My favorite bar has closed in Los Feliz. Okay. The Good Luck. Yeah. Did you like going oh. there? Oh. I think I think we were. I think we I interviewed you other. for a piece. Oh, you interviewed me for that. I interviewed you for a piece. Did I make the cut? Did I? Get oh yeah, that? you're in there. Right on. It was for um, Los Angelino. Rest in peace. It was. Yeah. Before I worked at Los Angelino. N- uh, yes, before. How about that? Before. Look it up. You're in there. <laughs> You're in there. So I'm is, on Google. Uh, huh? I've written so much online. Yeah. They just get lost. I can't put Tony Pierce, Los Angelino. Uh, Tony Pierce, good luck bar. There you go. But I've written about that a million times. Oh, my that's favorite. true. Right. On LAist and whatnot. Right? Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere I could. It was sad. Super sad. Super, super sad. I like the drawing room. You do? Yeah. Does the Tiki T count as Los Feliz? Eh, yeah. Why not? Of course. Do you like that place? You know, to hang out, but I wish I were drinking something different. You don't like sweet rum? No. Tropical drinks? No. I mean, they're, yeah, I I, I appreciate maybe more modern, um, refined versions. <laughs> Look at you, Miss Fancy. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, I sound like an asshole, but um, <laughs> just uh, refined. less sugar, less okay. sugar. You know, a little more. I'm sure I could find something if I really looked for at, at the TET. It's just, you know, maybe I haven't had as much experience. Why are there so many Asian foodies in L.A.? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Has anybody asked you that, that question before? Oh, my gosh. This actually brings back memories of um, back, in our, back in my blogging days. Yeah. When we were all visibly... Asian and at restaurants in this circuit blogging circuit there was a guy who actually wrote a blog post explaining why there are so many Asian food bloggers do you remember who that person was Kevin Eats okay I think I remember him yeah and of course it was just like you can't you can't explain why without just generalizing and offending and uh you know Who, why would they, anybody be offended it just is a thing it's like i think he were he used um words such as like conspicuous consumption well that's offensive <laughs> that's what i mean like a girl why, can't eat why are why are asians like automatically more conspicuous or <laughs> right <that too. laughs> right but i just find it interesting that it is. that well first of all the best ones also <laughs> At the LA Times, it seems like yeah. there's um, there's an Asian proponent for sure. For sure, I I so my best answer would be that Asians generally, this is how we express love. Our our parents express love, oh. you know, as they feed us. Like um, in Taiwanese, at least, which is all I can speak to, <laughs> you know, the, one of the uh, one of the phrases we get asked when we first get home is like, "Did you eat yet?" Oh. Like, did you eat yet? Did you eat yet? And that's in Taiwanese and Japan boy, and um, you know that's that's just how there there's no like there's no custom that you know we see in these Taiwanese homes where like I love you, not, like no one says that to each other. <laughs> we just feed each other, <laughs> and that's how we show love. It's 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 typical for a mom and dad not to tell their kids that they love them. It's so typical. It's more rare, I would say, where, you know, um, especially in comparison with just here's some food. You need to eat. No, you need to eat more. You didn't eat enough. And then the next breath, they'd be like, they'd be like, yeah, you're getting kind of fat. <laughs> you know, just super blunt, just super, um, you know, like to other cultures it would be judgmental. But, you know, there's a sliding scale on whether it is judgmental or not. <laughs> so I, I'm going to be a psychiatrist now. Yeah. That's expressed in Asian foodies in L.A. Uh-huh. That's your love language to us? Your That's readers? Our, well, it's, um, I guess it's just what spurns the curiosity is that if food is such a huge part of your 
culture or then you start thinking about what you're eating or um, and also um, when you mention that like I eat everything it's basically also a result of like if an Asian mom offers you something you don't say no <laughs> so you try everything and therefore you're cut your um, you're just used to not saying no and you try everything at least once I guess so this uh, I love you business mm-hmm has that do you think that that's ending with your generation yeah so you and your bro- boyfriend yeah. said said this to each other early in the relationship uh yeah yeah and other other uh people of your age other yeah other asian friends of yours yeah definitely a generational shift for sure yeah and you know also like acculturation to america <laughs> america right because we do say it a lot in we america. do we do why not yeah who cares exactly What's the big whoop? Yeah. No more passive aggressive. Have you talked about this with your parents? <laughs> hmm. Is that, is that, you're you not going to get a straight answer out of them? I, I've like, I've definitely done the whole, while I was maybe an adolescent and watching sitcoms on TV. And you know, there's always like, like everything gets resolved at the end and everyone talks about their feelings <laughs> and Oh, all we needed to do was communicate <laughs> to solve this this problem. And then I think like I think my mom just waved it off. Like, why isn't our I would ask her, like, why isn't our family like this? And then, you know, it's just a, such an absurd question to her to even <laughs> Is there anything in Los Feliz that people should know about if they haven't made it here because because I feel like if you don't live around here yeah the only time that you'll come to Los Feliz Mm -hmm. is accidentally when you go to the Greek or yeah observatory go to skylight books you know a lot of the book talks are there all the author events Mm -hmm. right that's like part of every author's circuit and there ain't a lot of bookstores anymore exactly so that is our gem right for sure. Um, what else? You know, go for the walk in Griffith. I like just even hanging out underneath Griffith, right? Like below the Greek or whatnot and just spreading a, a picnic blanket and like reading a book. I mm-hmm. like doing that on one of the lawns right there because it's right there. Free parking. Free parking. Barnes doll. I like to do that. Why am I drawing a blank? The art park. Oh, yes. With the Frank Lloyd Wright house. The, Have you been in there? Yeah. It's really cool. Um, I'm remodeled. drawing a blank because it's been closed for a year. Exactly. And then they, they have opened up. I don't think they've opened up the, um, what is the name of that house? Yeah. And it's Enis? Enis house? Ennis? No. Ennis is different. I don't know the name either. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I actually just donated my baby grand piano. Oh, ba 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 yeah because you weren't playing it because i i was like it needs to be played i need this stop being selfish the i just i just donated it to somebody that the music guild matched me with who you know was a lower income student who was a serious music you know uh major and had students so i know other people would um enjoy this piano as well and it was it was the Yamaha Baby Grand that I was gifted when I was seven years old in Wisconsin, and I shipped it over here like a few years ago. Yeah, you were a saint, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, on your Instagram, so I'm not I'm not blowing up your spot. No, all good. You had a um, a video about your cat and how you were trying to keep your cat from jumping over the balcony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yes. was this ba- baby grand on the second floor? Yeah. There's professional piano movers. Wow. That only move pianos, and they're very efficient, but they know how to um, move a piano without damaging it. So they just tilted my baby grand on the side, you know, took the drill, like unscrewed them, and then took off the legs, and then they wheeled it out. <laughs> That's how they move them. That's beautiful what you did. Oh, thank you. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it feels good to 
to give it to someone who will play it a lot, you know? I've got one final question for you. Yeah. You have these Chinese characters next to your name on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Is that your name in Chinese? That's my name in Chinese. That's what my, um, I had my mom translate that for me. D d is it? I can't even write it. <laughs> when your parents named you, mm -hmm. is it Esther or is, there, is it a Chinese name? It's a Chinese name. Can you say that for us? Um, Lin Ching. Lin Ching. Mm hmm Thank you, Lin Ching. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. We will see you out there in the restaurant world. Awesome. See you out there. Thank you. Thanks. How great was Esther? You know who else sparks joy every time we think of them? Our Patreons, who always let us go home with the doggy bag. When you stoke us, you're saying, Tony, Jordan, have that extra chicken wing. Drinks on me. Or buy that extra accessory to your PlayStation 5. Don't have a PlayStation 5. Every buck you hand over helps keep this insane project rolling. So shout out to our Patreons. Nancy Rommelman, Allie Miller, Sean Atlow, Matt Mills, Sean Wallace, Greg and Molly, Jamie Taylor, The Lonely Chair, George Wright, Mark Johnson, Kira Ann, Barney Granke, Ben Welch, and Henry Furman. Want to hear your name at the end of next week's show? Go to patreon.com slash here in LA and give till it hurts. Also, shout out to our Angelinos. To be an Angelino, all you got to do is PayPal us 25 bucks or more, and we will list you in the Here in LA website forever. You will also be given a number. You're letting everybody know how early you got in to make this dream come alive. For example, Angelino number one is Allie Miller. Number two, George Wright. Number three, Rita Joanne. Number four, Jason Sutter. Number five, Grant Hotton. And number six, Coming in at number six is Rob Baker. Just PayPal us your hard-earned cash to busblog at gmail.com. Want to support us, but you've turned down a huge payday because you don't want to get vaxxed? Ice Cube? Well, even you can still help. Post your favorite episode on your Facebook. Tweet something nice about this. Tell all your homies. Tell them how Here in L.A. is spelled with an A. And then it's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google and everywhere. Here in L.A. is produced by myself, Tony Pierce, and the man with the Kiss the Cook apron, Jordan Katz. Editing, mixing, and music supervision by Jordan Katz. Songs by Orgone and Jordan Katz. Special thanks to Cindy for creating the logo, Jen Adams for inspiring me, and for Danny Chella for still being my friends. <laughs> for still being my friend after I dissed that year's Coachella. Why, why Aaron Rodgers? Why? why?